the GM of the team. He is Pat Onstead. Pat, thank you very much for coming on. Thanks for having me on, Glenn. Appreciate it. Always appreciate it. All right, so here we are. We're at the enough of the uh, press conferences, enough of the media. We're ready to get uh, Hector Herrera on the field. How are you feeling uh, right now around this historic signing that you played a big part in? Yeah, really excited. That's uh, It feels like he's he's been here for a while, just because we've been talking about it for a while, but I think it'll be a huge boost for us, for our fan base, uh, and for our club in general, and also the city uh, for, for him when he steps on the field, you know, hopefully that's on uh, on Saturday. He's uh, eligible today. Uh, I can confidently say today the transfer or the uh, ITCs got transferred, so he is officially on the roster. So, which is nice. Uh, not that it's a big deal; it's a kind of a, a stepping stone. But he is available for for uh, uh, for Saturday, so we're excited. The club, myself, we've been all pushing out that this is his debut. Um, how does that work? Uh, are we assured he's going to play in this since we've been saying it's his debut? Well, I, I hope so. You know, but things, <laughs> funny things can happen. Uh, he's been training. What I can say is he's been training uh, all week and uh, right now, right now is, is, is very healthy. So, so uh, we're hoping that he'll be, it's up to Paulo. Paulo. So if anyone's going to point fingers, if he's, if he's healthy and uh, Paulo decides not to play and that's Paulo's choice, but uh uh, we know the quality he can bring, and uh, he's brought a lot already to training this week. It's uh, you can tell the guys are excited about it as well. So uh, I, I think it'll be a, a big moment here in uh, the history of the Houston Dynamo. No question about it. Uh, Dynamo general manager Pat Onstead, take me um, into training because you and I were down there yesterday or yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. And we were looking at him, and there's just an error about him, the way he moves and the way yeah. he does things. Maybe you can expand on that a little bit. Well, there's a there's a reason he played at, at FC Porto and uh, Atletico Madrid. Um, he's he's a top player. I think uh, when you're around those players and. Uh, I've been fortunate to play against them. Uh, I haven't been able to play with a ton of them. Uh, certainly in, from an international standpoint, I got to play against some with Canada. And uh, they just, to your point, they carry themselves differently. It's almost like they glide around the field. And um, I always compare it to my my Canadian roots with the Wayne Gretzky and watching like the guy didn't look the most fluid and everything, but he's always there, always ahead of the play, can read the game uh, very well. And you can see... Uh, uh, Hector's ability and just just his ability to understand what's going to happen the next the next play and be prepared for the next play and the next the next pass. Um, it's phenomenal. It's really nice to watch close up. How does that change when he comes to MLS? Because that ability to see things and uh, I'm trying to remember the word they call it uh, scanning. I guess is yeah, yeah. is the is yeah. the word that that there are certain players that see things quicker than others and are able to take these snapshots. Maybe you can take us into that. Yeah, he does. And he just reads the game faster. And part of it's he's been there, done that, and, and he's trained on a regular basis at a, at a faster speed than, than we train at, really. And that's just the level of our league at this point. Oh, we're, we're vastly catching up. It's certainly a lot faster than when I trained. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of the, the ex-Dynamo guys will tell you the same thing. Um, so it's nice to see that it is improving and we're proving about leaps and bounds, but he's a guy that's played at the highest levels. And, and the one thing I noticed is he's already kind of helping guys like, Hey, you should be here when this happens and don't be afraid to tuck in here. And, um, it's, so it's less to do with the raw, raw, like, Hey, go get stuck in and win a pass, but more to be about positionally, to be aware of what's happening around you and where he wants people around him. So he can show off what his talent as well. So. Uh, it's been it's been interesting to watch, and I think the guys are excited uh, being able to play with them. It's it's always nice to say you get to play with a guy of his level. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're all in this together, and the biggest thing we need we need now for our group is to start winning games. And uh, we're excited about the the challenges ahead of us on Saturday. Matt, this has got to be a little tricky for you and Paulo Nagamura and, and Asher Mendelson, the competitive side of things, because you've got to be very careful, right, with the hype and everything to use him effectively with the volume of games. There's a game on Tuesday. Um, you know, I don't know how much training you said he did come in very fit, which doesn't surprise yep. I think any of us, yeah. but it is tricky, right? It is. And uh, you know, Paul Caffrey, our head of uh, performance has done a good job. Uh, he's pushed him pretty hard. I know Hector's taking a little, the heat is the real here when, until you experience it and train in it for a little while. So we will, uh, we'll be careful, make sure that, that he stays fit for this window. Uh, and we think if we can get him through this window that he'll, you know, get his feet underneath him and be ready to go for us. But uh, we're also in, in the position, uh, unfortunately, that we need to win. We need to win games and we got to get points on the board. Um, 
you know, I think we were all very disappointed in the, the Charlotte performance uh, and, and even coming off of the Portland performance, because I know we lost the game in Portland, but I, I would argue uh, we outshot them. I think it was 24, 11 Our expected goals was about three to one and we lose two one. It was probably our, uh, certainly I can comfortably say, and that includes a three, nothing win in LA was our best road performance of the season and arguably maybe our best performance. So I think we were on, it felt like we're in a pretty good high, you know, the Chicago game was interesting. One, two, nothing. Um, I think we controlled that game. That was a controlled win. I don't think we played our best stuff, but uh, the Portland, you felt like, okay, now we're playing our best stuff. Well, we'll see a loss. And then uh, we, we unfortunately laid an egg against Charlotte. I don't think Paulo hid that in his post game conference either. So uh, for us, we need to bounce back and, and no, no better one to do it against against our biggest rival in Dallas. He's Dynamo general manager, Pat Onstad, restructuring the roster, turning things around. Um, if I, if I take you into Hector Herrera to get the best out of Hector Herrera, does that mean you need to make some additional big signings in whatever transfer window it is? Could be this I, one. Could yeah. Be one. Uh, it's going to be difficult in this one. I'll be, I'll be just flat out honest. Uh, we have, uh, we're a, a couple of reasons. One is we're in roster spots. We're tight. Um, <laughs> number two, and most importantly, really is we don't have the roster uh, financial flexibility at this stage. Uh, we're pretty tied up most of our money. We do have some room for a, a one, possibly two additions of which we're trying to get across the line and we'll keep working until the window closes to try to get that done. Um, and I think the other one that, that people have, are pretty well aware of, but the international slot position that we have here, the one we traded away, you know, 12 years ago for, for a lifetime, this cost us over, you know, two plus million dollars really in the lifetime of that deal and then also one one more for the Corey Baird right so we're, we're up against it we're gonna have to try to find that and when you don't have a lot of money to spend to begin with it becomes tricky but we've got flexibility and we've got some ideas and we've got some targets that we're we're close to uh, I wouldn't say necessarily in the next 48 hours but I, I would hope uh, sooner than later under 22 initiative does this come into play here yeah, it does for, for flexibility for the roster. So if people are uh, hoping we're bringing in, uh, you know, another 32 year old, like with, with the experience of Hector and other DP where our DP slots are, are used up. So we're, we're not able to bring in a DP, but with the, the flexibility of the youth player slot is that it's a nice cap friendly player, but it also gives us some opportunity to use some ownership uh, money and, uh, Ted, like I've said from day one, you know, that he's, he's been willing to uh, help us out and support us to help us try to build the best squad that we can. He's Dynamo General Manager Pat Onstad. We're talking about uh, transfer windows. And uh, uh, look, I, I think all of us on the outside, myself included, you know, every time I talk to you, I learn a little bit more about the inner workings, which <laughs> I'm not sure anybody can ever say they're a, a master's in it. Because As long so as you didn't say the inner workings of my mind, then you're in good shape. As yeah. long as you said the inner workings of the MLS salary cap. Player, model, player categories, the salary cap. Maybe yeah. take us into how difficult this is in a lot of ways, because it's just not as simple as, hey, we got money, we want to go get a player. Yeah, but it, it is it is difficult, but it's also uh, I I I think it's it's challenging. And we were um, uh, you know speaking to someone today uh, about scouting in our league, and so what's that like? I said it's interesting because you have it's uh, if you're in a Premier League, you kind of go look for the best players possible in each position, or a guy that'll fit your game model. But you're willing to spend millions of dollars. You're look, you're obviously in a different world than that we sh we're shopping in or a different supermarket, but we're, I want to, it's kind of fun is that you're looking at and saying, okay, we have X amount of dollars. We have, here's, here's a price that we can pay and let's go try to find those. And when you're in that world, it's while it's challenging, it's, it's also enjoyable because you're trying to find that the best piece that will fit your game model, fit your club. Uh, and at the, at that, with the price point that you're able to spend. So um, while it is challenging at times, um, it really just comes down to figuring out exactly what you can and cannot do. And you are limited. So uh, it's not like you all of a sudden you have 5,000 players that are in front of you. You really have a group of 15 to 20 guys and you've got to kind of narrow in and try to try to see which one you can get over the line. How tough has it been to turn around this roster to this point? Yeah, I, th I think, listen, we've, um, uh, I think for us, what we wanted to find out exactly what we had um, and, you know, all, all, for transparency, I guess is defensively we've been we've we've probably even exceeded what we expected. I think we've been defensively we've been very good. You know, last year we gave 54 goals. We're at I think 23 this year. 
Um, you know, and, and fortunately, I think some of our signings have panned out well in those positions. I think Steve Clark's been a good signing for us. But that's been good. I think Daniel Stairs has stepped up and done a good job uh, for us. I think, you know, I, you know, I think basically our whole back, Zach has, Zach has come in now and has kind of got his feet underneath him and has helped us uh, on the ball. So I, we're pretty happy with the way defensively. And I think in central midfield, we've been happy with that sign of getting Coco on. Uh, but the reality is we're, we're not creating as much. We're creating more this year uh, offensively but not significantly. And I think if we want to be a playoff team, which we still believe we are, uh, we need to get better uh, in, in creating more goal scoring opportunities. I think our XG is pretty much lines up with our goals. It's about 22 and uh, expected goals. Sorry for the, the XG stuff. I get a little data geek once in a while. And then uh, uh, 22 goals scored. So we're very kind of on par. Um, we've expected to give up a few more goals and, and we've done better than we've expected, but uh, we are who we are at this point in the season. And so we're going to have to, you know, one, we can get a little bit of help, uh, try to bring someone in, but also we're going to, it's, it's not the sexiest response, but we're going to have to try to figure it out from within. Um, one of the options, obviously bringing in Hector is, um, and this is, again, this is all down to Paulo and these are discussions we've had, but Paulo is not going to tip his cards. He's going to decide, but what does that do for DQ? Does DQ now play in one of the wide positions? Does that, does that give us an opportunity to change things up in a little formation, uh, systems of play uh it's really going to depend on what paulo wants to do um but that that could be like another signing in itself and can we try to find that the right combination you know it was great to see fafa come off the bench and bang went in um that you know it's been a for him he'd probably say it's been a tough season for him but it was great to see him keep his attitude uh you know positive and and fight through it and then came came and scored a goal and gave us a chance in that game the other day is there a sense of urgency on you to get a signing done in this this window? Yeah, there's a sense based of urgency on, all the time. Yeah, for but me, based there is. on the immediate season and making the playoffs, because yeah, you guys have put the board at making the playoffs. Yeah, and then we're still still laying it down. That's our that's our goal, and we still believe we've got we've got the opportunity to do it. You know, obviously the window's closing if we if we don't continue to pick up points, but um, yeah, I want to try to get someone in here as soon as possible. It takes time to to acclimatize and on and two fronts, getting used to the system and the player, but also the weather. Uh, so we're trying to get guys done and, and trying to get across. We'd hope to get a couple done, to be honest, in the last week or so. And uh, unfortunately, for whatever reason, uh, they didn't pan out. So we'll just keep working until we do. Pat Onstead, Dynamo General Manager, ahead of the Houston Dynamo, Texas Derby, FC Dallas, and uh, expected huge crowd. I, I've been hearing sellout bantered around. Uh, this is going to be a great day on Saturday. HoustonDynamo.com. Uh, for your tickets for that one. And uh, we'll give a pair away tonight as well. Um, I just wanted to take you into, you know, the wide game. And, and you have mentioned that you are looking for a winger type guy. Yep. You know, what do you, we've talked about it. The, the, all the players, Tyler Pasher, whoever's played out there, Memo Rodriguez, Fafa Pico, Corey Baird. This is not for lack of effort, but, but why do you think we can't get somebody over the top out of that group consistently to really add to that area of the team? Uh, I think if we had the answer to that, that would, uh, you know, for all of us, for Paulo, for myself, for Asher Mendelson, you know, Ted Siegel, I think we'd be, we'd be a, a lot happier. Um, and I think at various times this season, these guys have stepped up and, and done really well. You know, uh, if you think back to Fafa in Miami, he's had, had a great one, Tyler in, in LA, you know, these guys have, um, uh, memo memo pretty recently has, has done well playing in those, those positions. Actually, he's got a great record. He's got a winning record when he plays wide for us. So, uh, the, the team does. So he, there, there's a lot of positives, I think, from those, those guys. And, and, uh, you know, Corey hasn't, hasn't hit, I think the level that he, we expected from, and I know he's trying like, to your point about effort. It's certainly not from a lack of effort of him when he's usually on the field, he's, he's one of the highest runners and covers the most distance at high speed than any of our guys. So it's just not going for him. But, um, you know, for us, we're going to need, we're going to need one or two of those guys to step up. You know, we can, we can bring in another player, but we need one of the two of those guys to step up for us to have a shot at the playoffs. Yeah. And, and the reason I'm talking like this is because we, you are looking both in the near term and in the long term, and that's the job of a GM. He, he's Pat Onstad joining us here on Soccer Matters, ESPN 97.5, Daspit Law Firm. Overdependent on Darwin Quintero? Um, I don't know. If you look at, uh, you know, take out Austin, take Drew so out of Austin, I think they, they, you know, they, they rely on him a lot as well. I think when you have a playmaker of Darwin's quality, um, yeah, you, you, you do rely on them a lot, and that's kind of our league. For a lot of teams that rely on the tens, I think they're they're really important focal pieces. But 
Um, it's certainly, I, we, I don't think even Darwin would have planned to, to, to have had the success that he's had, you know, offensively, certainly for us this year, but uh, it's a nice problem to have. <laughs> that's for sure. And it's, and it's one of the main reasons what's, what's kept us in it, you know, it kept us yeah, in the hunt. The, the only thing I would say on that is Drews, he's a 25 year old and he's a 90 yep. minute player. He plays every minute of every game. He does a variety yep. of things. You guys have a bit of a challenge and I think Paulo does. And I think he's done a tremendous job with yeah. monitoring and managing Darwin's minutes to get the best out of him. Hundred percent agree. How tricky is that? How tricky yeah, and is I, that? I hundred percent agree with you, and I give Paulo all the credit in the world for that. You know, Paulo and Paul Caffrey, where they've they've looked at his minutes, his training loads, his his game loads, and and I also give Darwin credit for that to understand you know where he's at at this time of his career, this point of his career, and what he can and can't do. Uh, and and for uh, all intents and purposes, he has been completely bought in, uh, which I know for Dynamo fans, he probably they probably haven't seen that from him before, but. Um, it, he, he's been a pleasure to work with, certainly from, from Paulo and, and Paul's standpoint, and even from my own, uh, we, have, we actually have pretty good banter and good relationship going on. And I think a lot of that is just, we were up front with him and what, what we expected from, uh, you know, we told him, you're not going to be a 90 minute guy. That's not what we see. Uh, if your, your con his contract was also, uh, laid out that he, if he's on the field and he does well, then he'll be rewarded and and he's absolutely embraced that. And he's, he's been a fantastic guy in the locker room. He's been a big lift for a lot of the guys. Good bit of business there. Dynamo general manager, Pat Onset. But is that a position long-term that you have to look towards? And, and is it a great example in seeing a Sebastian Driussi just up the road? I know these guys aren't easy to find and they cost a lot of money, yeah. but wow. I mean, that guy has really lived up to it in every aspect. Hundred percent. I mean, obviously, with Darwin's age, you know, it's something we'll have to look look for. But it's also it depends on, uh, you know, how we play. If we do, are we going to play with the pure ten, or are we going to try to make sure we get guys who we'll play a little bit of a different style? I think part of that is us evolving and as a club and who we want to be. Uh, I don't think we're. Just, well, I know we're not there yet, but um, that'll be the bigger question, I think, in terms of what's the profile that we go after. But but surely, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, we need to get better in, in on the offensive side of the game. I know whether that's tens, wide guys, forwards, you know, attacking midfielders, you know, even set pieces, getting whatever way we can, we need to learn how to score more goals and uh, become better at that. How do you position this with uh, Sebas Ferreira? Um, you know, because look, obviously he's accountable for his game as is everybody. Yep. And by the way, uh, nobody's bagging on anybody here. This is just legitimate soccer talk. Yep. But also, when we mention those four guys and their lack of production, that does have an effect on a traditional leaning center forward. Yeah, right? and yeah, and Sebastian is a guy that relies on service. He's, uh, you know, at times he probably tries too much to try to create his own shot, and that's not his game. And never, certainly that I, I've been following him for a few years before we signed him, it was it was never something that you saw in his game. Uh, and, I, and at times you can tell when he's pressing and he hasn't been scoring, he starts to try to become that player which uh, I'd rather him leave that to Darwin Quintero. Darwin can do that, <laughs> but, but Sebastian should just try to try to get in the box. But if he's not getting service uh, in all fairness to him, it becomes difficult as a forward to score goals if you're not getting the ball in the box. Um, but that's not to say, you know, there's lots of different ways that we can create that service. It doesn't have to be from, oh, we're not getting wide service. That's not true. We could fullbacks could get higher up the field. Our central midfielders could feed him as well. So there's lots of ways for him to get service. Uh, the last thing I want to do is say it's because of X, Y, and Z. Um, you know, it's it's a team game. And right now, uh, like I said earlier, I think in this, this conversation is we are who we are. This is right now we're a team that's anywhere from, depending on the games, four to six points out. And we've got to figure out a way to make that gap up and, and try to get in the playoffs. For the record, though, it's still playoffs, right? That's it. No, we're not changing anything. Uh, we, no. You know, we believe we can get there. We believe we have the team, regardless of whether we add someone or not. We believe we have the team and the personnel here that can qualify for the playoffs. Are we saying it's going to be easy? Absolutely not. That's not, uh, uh, as, as they say, what's the, what is it, the line, something along the lines, it's not rewarding unless it's difficult. But that's certainly what we believe in. And this group uh, is striving for it. The players still believe in it. I think, like I said, I think the Charlotte game from them was really disappointing. Uh, from from a club standpoint, uh, because we felt that was a game that we we really wanted those three points and just stay really close to the hunt. But so now we're gonna have to find three somewhere else. 
that's that's how it goes and uh we're gonna have to be better than we are we have been but i think we can do that let's start with fc dallas on saturday that'd be uh would be fantastic there's a there's a there's a brainchild uh, planned from me to you yeah <laughs> exactly thank you pat great interview thanks for the transparency and i think most importantly the fans appreciate the transparency and uh talking about all these different issues this is a great interview great information thank you no, thanks for having me on, Glenn. Appreciate it. All right. That's the one and only Pat Onstead, Dynamo General Manager, head of Dynamo uh, FC Dallas, HoustonDynamo.com for tickets. That does it tonight for Soccer Matters on ESPN 97.5, uh, presented by John Dow.